Welcome back guys. Last video, when we did the dyno testing, we told you we would do another video about analysis, understanding of what we've measured there with different setups, and go over some theory around it. So, here we are, welcome back. Now, before we go into the, the readings we've got precisely, we're gonna have to go and do a little bit of theory to explain you what we've seen in those tests. Now, most of you already know, but a two-stroke engine exhausts its burned gas through an opening in the cylinder. We call it the exhaust port. Now, long time ago, uh, people developing the two-stroke engine understood that we could increase the efficiency of the two-stroke by having an exhaust shape in a way, the well-known tune pipe, in a way where the wave, the pressure wave sent into that exhaust could be sent back to the cylinder exactly before the exhaust closes again to recompress the gases before the next explosion. So let me bring on top of this video a quick animation, visual animation, so you can see what it looks like to have that wave go back and forth in the cylinder and repressurize it to, for the next explosion. We're back. Now, so, here's, here's how we can actually understand better why and when this effect happens. Like we just saw, the cylinder movement and the exhaust wave needs to be in sync. They have to dance together, they have to be synchronized. Now, some fact we know, the wave inside the exhaust moves at speed of sound. That is approximately, most of the time, around 343 meter per second. So, given a length of the exhaust that is constant, it doesn't stretch, it, it, it's, it's a known value. For it, in this instance, for example, if the exhaust would be one meter long, we know that the traveling back and forth, so twice the length, would take 5.8 milliseconds to that pressure wave to go back to the cylinder. Now, like we just said, we want that to happen in sync with the opening and closing of the piston. Now, in most modern engines, depending on the use of the engine, how it's been designed, the exhaust will be open between 160 degrees opening to 205 opening in really high RPM or snowmobile cylinder, stuff like that. So, let's average it out just for the sake of this measurement to 150, so half the rotation. That is a pretty standard measurement for a two-stroke cylinder, so we know that the exhaust opens for half the rotation. We know that we need to sync with that exhaust that has a meter long and takes that amount of time to bring the wave back. And we need to do that at the same time as the exhaust open and close, so half the rotation. So, here we have a 60 second or a minute. And we have 180 degrees, or let's say half a turn, right? Half, half a rotation. So, pretty simple mathematic here, we're gonna be approximately having a sink happening at 5,172 rotation per minute. All right, so that would mean that the setup in a 180 degree exhaust cylinder would have its its max sync at this rotation. Now, the wave going in the cylinder is not a punctual event. It, it, it goes in the cylinder as a broad wave, and so the, the efficiency of the wave back to the cylinder will be effective more than one exact RPM. It'll, be, it'll work out for approximately 1,000, 2,000 RPM uh, for, most, for most of the configurations. That being said, that tells us that our two variables here are exhaust length and time of opening of the exhaust port. So, either if the pipe is shorter, that, it, that number is going to increase, it will match a higher RPM, or if that the exhaust stays the same, if we raise the height of the exhaust port, it will also increase the RPM at which that thing is going to happen. So, it's being used for Years and years and years, if you take a two-stroke and you open up the exhaust higher, that engine's gonna pull to a higher RPM. So, that brings us to the test we did last time with the different cylinders and different exhausts. So, we'll focus on two completely opposite situations here. For example, the CR500 
torque. We'll talk about the, the torque mainly because horsepower is just torque multiplied by the RPM. So the torque band is really what we want to talk about. That gives us the direct reading of the efficiency of our combustion and where that pressure is generated. So CR500 pretty uh, low RPM, mid RPM kind of torque curve. Stock CR500 has an exhaust opening approximately 178 degrees, so pretty on the low side where we had that drag CR500, really highly ported cylinder with also a short exhaust, so everything was put in motion to have higher RPM kind of sync between the exhaust and the cylinder itself. It had, I think, 200, 202 timing on the cylinder. You can see that the, the wall torque generation has been moved to a higher RPM, so that means that the sync happened way, way uh, further down the line of the RPM range. So. Pretty similar torque, we've not reinvented the cylinder itself, it's still a 500, it still has the, has the same surface area, but we moved the same numbers further down the line. So, since horsepower is, like we said, torque times the RPM, it did increase the horsepower quite a lot, so the numbers are much, much bigger. So, completely two different setups, completely two different bike to ride, they cannot be used in all situations. It's either one or the other. Now in, I'm sure you've heard before the, the saying a, a power valve is not useful in a big board two stroke. I understand where that comes from because if you would took a standard CR500 for example, so let me grab a chalk. So if we add a power valve to that CR500, uh, you, you wouldn't gain a lot. You would probably gain something like this and that's about it and that's why people most of the time will say that a power valve is not useful on a big boy two-stroke but in the case where we, you could add it to the drag cr500 you have all that to gain all that red curve right here could be added to that one and that's exactly what we did on the pm09 and we push that theory to the maximum if you look at it here we have that fully open exhaust right here when the blade closes see it fully closes the sub exhaust and it completely follows the piston shape. That is pretty much as perfect as a power valve can be. It simulates as if the port itself was really low and then when you open it, it rises up. So what it allows us to do is have that situation where in the PM09 we have a closed exhaust at 175 timing, lower than the CR500 stock is, and when it opens, it goes to 195, plus the subports open, so you have a lot of availability for uh, flowing out the exhaust at IRPM. So, what did it do? We ended up, back in our test in the video, with a curve that looked like that. I've had some dot to guide myself right here. It gave us a torque curve that would start really early, and keep living on like if it was a drag bike. Actually, I messed it up a little bit here. Uh, let's be honest about that one right there. So that's where we ended up our tests at. Higher than the CR5 stock, higher than the drag one. It just, it's an overall broad kind of power band that does both. It pulls great on the bottom. Now higher than the CR5 because cylinder is more efficient it's bigger as well 95 millimeter piston instead of 89 so we had that higher torque from that better cylinder and piston combination and then it just kept pulling like a drag bike all the way to 9000 rpm so bottom line that's the concept we've all been working around at pantera for the design of the new pantera pm0960 cc engine because i mean Everybody can make good power, let's be honest. But if it's on such a narrow power band, it's unusable, you're never in the right gear, it's just complicated to ride. You guys for years have kind of been asking us for a two-stroke engine with a four-stroke kind of curve with a broad power band, some equal torque everywhere. And that's what I think we've been able to deliver to you. It's, it's usable, it just, that's what you want to get out of the corner and not look if you're in the right power band and the right gear, it just it'll put the power to the ground, and that's that's what win races. That's what 
gets you the best feeling to have always instant power that comes from the engine when you need it. And that's what we're giving you. So, that's what Panther is about. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and see you next time for the, for the new episode.